Not so long ago, in order to print words on a sheet of paper, you had to arrange pieces of metal, each in the shape of one of the letters and found in a tray full of type. If you fancied changing the font or typeface of the letters, you would have had to take a different, different pieces of metal from a different tray. And so on, leading to... Just as with music and violin making, printing was a craft transmitted through a chain of apprentices, and once again, in the world today, there is a new industry, based on machines that embody a radical break from previous crafts, and at the heart of each modern printing machine, a host of nanoscale digital devices on silicon chips. And what I point to is what would have been most surprising to engineers from past decades, any time before the 1960s really, isn't that you would have machines that in the home that could produce sound, we already had those in the form of, of phonographs. Uh, printers without pieces of metal type, well, they were offset lithography, which didn't have little pieces of metal to move around. Uh, instant mail across, across the miles, well, we had telegraphs and teletype machines. But the idea of taking all of those different functions and putting them into a device that would fit on your laptop or, 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 or in a pocket, and doing all of that with one radical new technology, this digital circuitry, that's what would have been so surprising. To put the equivalent of a camera and, a, and boxes full of film in a digital darkroom in a box, and also a typewriter and a television and a telephone, and a filing cabinet and access to the world's libraries, well, that's, that's, that's pretty silly, that's pretty crazy, except that it works through digital electronics. And how does that work? Well, there are these nanoscale components. And the nanoscale components take the, the domain that we're talking about here, information, and they process it in its smallest bits, bits, bytes, the ultimate fine divisions. And when they produce their, the products that we address, or that, we, that we experience, they again work by putting together little slices. Little slices of sound are put together in a digital audio system. Little bits of color are put together to make images and video. So what we have is a technology that has nanoscale components, works at high frequency, and works with small, identical parts, minimal parts, to make complex patterns at tremendous speed, driven by digital data. Well, what if we were able to do something like that in the material, physical world? Imagine what the world might be like if we were really good at making things, better things, cleanly, inexpensively, and on a global scale. What if ultra-efficient solar arrays cost no more to make than cardboard and aluminum foil and laptop supercomputers cost about the same? Now add ultra-efficient vehicles, lighting, and the entire behind-the-scenes infrastructure of an industrial civilization, all made at low cost and delivered and operated with a zero-carbon footprint. If we were that good at making things, the global prospect would be not scarcity, but unprecedented abundance, radical, transformative, and sustainable abundance. We would be able to produce radically more of what people want and at a radically lower cost, in every sense of the word, both economic and environmental. This isn't the future most people expect. 